Have you ever gone to a unit only to find out that the condenser fan is not working? Why is it that by simply getting a screwdriver and spinning it, the condenser fan now works? Well, I disconnected the capacitor from it, but I'm basically doing the same function that start winding would do. I'm giving it a little push so I can get going and start spinning. But how do we check a condenser fan. How do we check if it's gonna work when it receives power? Let's find out. Welcome to the rat's nest. You know, in, in many cases you come to a unit and you have all these wires staring back at you, so it can be a little intimidating, but um, once we know what we're doing, what we're looking for, it's not too bad. Um, in this case though, before we even start working, we have to just confirm briefly that we have no power. Um, even when people say, well, I turn off the disconnect or I turn off the breaker. Uh, don't believe that. You need to confirm with yourself there's no power. So, you know, you know myself, with, this is like the, a simple test that I like to do to make sure your meter, your leads are working. I put it on ohms, test it with each other. I'm getting continuity. There's a path. It's going to work. So I put it on bolts now. I go ahead and check line one and line two. This is my power coming in. I got zero from line one to ground, zero from line two to ground, zero. So we're good, we can start working on it. Uh, the first things first is identifying what wires are coming from my condenser fan. So I'm gonna put my hand in here and then I can see the wires going to that fan and when they come up here, it's these three wires right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and pull it out. You know, And when you're first starting out on the field, um, at least my, myself, in my case, I would take pictures of where everything would go. Um, maybe after a while, when you understand where everything's uh, wired up, maybe you might not have to do that, but pictures can save you a lot of hours. So I'm going to go ahead and pull all the wires out. Okay, so I got these three wires here. So um, the condenser fan motor just like when checking the compressor in an earlier video, video it, it's also a PSC, a permanent split capacitor uh, motor. And so the way we check it is the same way we would check a compressor. So we got these three wires, uh, but let's say you didn't know where these wires uh, went to. Let's say it was just hanging here. How would you identify which one's your start, which one's your run, and which one's your common? Well, I have this little whiteboard here that's the PSC motor, right? We got the start winding, we got the run winding, we got line one, and then we got line two. It's going straight to my run, but it's also going to one side of the capacitor and on the other side, it's going to my start for that motor. So let's go ahead and do some testing. Let's go ahead and ohm out. I basically, the wires that I just pulled out, the three wires, I, I basically put it right here and we're gonna ohm out and we're gonna see what resistance we're getting between the brown and black, black and yellow, and then brown and yellow. So let's start off with uh, brown and black. And yes, I gotta put it on ohms, the little horseshoe. Okay, so then let's go ahead and, and do that, brown and black. And I am getting, getting as you can see there, 52, 52.8. So 52.8 between black and yellow, I am getting 19.2. And then between brown and yellow, I am getting 71.7, 71.7. All right, so, how do, you know, how do we know what wires go where? Well, we know that my highest, when I read resistance in a PSC motor, the highest um, ohms is gonna be between run and start. So right away, I know that my 71.7, .7, that's gonna be my run and, and start. So I just don't know which one's which, but we'll figure it out right now. So we got brown and yellow, being the highest. 
So we know that either that's going to be brown or that's going to be yellow because my run and start is giving me my highest, gives me my highest ohms and my brown and yellow gave me my highest ohms. So in this case, we know that when I pulled it out from the capacitor, well, this is, this is going to be my start. This is, this is when it's receiving the current going to my start winding of that, of that motor. So I know that in this case, the start is the brown, my yellow is my, my run, and my common is going to be the one that's left. We already took care of yellow, we already took care of brown. The common is going to be the black one. And like I said, it makes sense, right? Brown and yellow, that's my run and start. That's the highest in ohms, right? Because it's going through the run winding and start winding. I'm going through both coils. The smallest one is going to be my run winding. So black and yellow, sure enough, is the lowest in ohms. And the middle one's going to be between common and start, which is my brown and, and black. And more or less, when these two add together, right, 52 plus 9, what is that, 71, almost 71, 71 point something, 5. So when these two add up, when these two, when we add these two, they should add up close to run and start. And sure enough, we are. We're pretty close. So now that if we've done this, now we can uh, come back over here and do one little test, another test as well. You also want to make sure that we're not getting a path from any of these wires to ground. It should be open line. You also want to make sure that it's not grounded as well. So open line. I'll check my yellow one. Open line. All right. So. We said that the uh, brown one was my capacitor. And a little tip here, uh, when you look at a capacitor, the one that, you know, in the case that you can see and it's all rusted, your C will have about four leads. And usually it's the one that has the most leads because you have three, right? One, two, three. Your Herm will have three. And then your fan will have one or two. It's by itself kind of lonely because we only need one wire that goes to my start winding for the condenser fan motor. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it there. All right. And so now another little tip here. Normally, and if you look at this uh, contactor here, this contactor, this side on the left is being controlled by the contactor coil. And what do I mean by that? Well, for power to go from down here to up here, the, the contactor needs to receive 24 volts so this can be pushed in. So the side that is being controlled by this contactor coil that, that determines if it's going to allow power to go through because of the contactor coil, it tends to be the common. So and in many cases, it tends to be a black wire. And I'm not saying that's for every case, but in most cases, the black one here is usually my, my common, the one being controlled by the, the, the contactor coil. Sometimes you have a contactor and both are being controlled by the contactor coil, but in this case, it's only the left side. So um, I'm going to go ahead and take the black one because we, we confirmed that that's going to be the, the, the common, and I'm going to put it in the back right here. You usually have a space here to put it in, in the back. And then we got this wire here. So we already took care of the start. We already took care of the common. We just need the, the run or line two. Now, this is what's cool about this. And I didn't know this for a while. Um, do you see this wire here? This yellow wire? I'm getting power from this side. And, it, and if you look carefully, there's nothing stopping voltage. I'm, sim I'm taking voltage in and boom, just going straight to this, to this side. Because it's not being controlled by the contactor coil. It's a straight path. So with this one, with my R, right here for my run winding, I can put it here on the C. And I can do that because 
if you follow this other wire, it's going to this side, to line two. So basically, and the way I like to explain it is it's, it's a, another junction. It's like a wire nut because this one here is going here and I need to put this run wind, the, the, the R for the condenser fan motor it needs to go to the line two or you know, to get power. I can either put it right here with the C because it's coming here from, my, from line two or I can also do this too. If there's space in the back, I can also put it back here and that's the same thing. That's gonna work. But if you ever go to a job and you don't see it here, but you see it here, that's gonna work as well because it's receiving power from line two. Now, another test that you can do is spinning the fan blade and see if it spins freely. Sometimes the bearings go bad and it doesn't allow the shaft to move the, the fan blade. Uh, and that's even after ohming out the motor and checking if it's uh, grounded and checking if the capacitor is good, you still might need to replace the condenser fan motor if it's not spinning freely. But as you can see, uh, condenser fan motors are the same concept as compressors. They have two coils. You're checking if the compa capacitor is good. You're, check you're ohming out the motors and you're making sure it is spinning freely. I hope this video helps and I'll catch you in the next one.